Good morning, everybody, and let me first thank the organizers for uh, inviting me here to give this presentation on our work. It's a very nice campus, and it's for the first time I'm on the ICTS new campus, though I have attended some earlier meetings of ICTS. So today, uh, I'll be talking about some of the works which was done by my PhD student, Manisha Arora, uh, which was published here. And last slide is about some ongoing work. Uh, this is about magnetic obstetra, as the title says, and topological quantization. So uh, where uh, majority of the people mostly work on the uniform magnetic field, which is typically the area of the quantum hall physics, uh, over the last few years, we have uh, worked on what is known as the magnetic modulation, that what will happen if you consider a two-dimensional uh, electronic system uh, to a modulated magnetic field. It also gives some very interesting physics. Uh, so we start with some interesting work on the graphene, and then finally also uh, teamed up with uh, Professor Alan Nogret in uh, University of Bath, who does, did, does experiment on such a system. So we did some of these works. But in most of these works, the interesting part is that the magnetic modulation is mostly one dimension. And in the one dimension, you have very standard technique, like particularly if it's a periodic modulation, you can use uh, transfer matrix techniques and others and study the modification of the band structure and so on and so forth. So when we uh, started first thinking about uh, generalizing this work for the 2D magnetic modulation, which is more common and uh, in the experimental structures, uh, there we find that you know that uh, that uh, technically it was much more difficult to extend this calculation, and it is in this co particular context, this particular work which I am going to talk about that is uh, uh, going to come. So this is uh, broadly the order where I'll do some little bit of uh, uh, historical uh, this uh, uh, anecdotes uh, from where this with which this work possibly can be connected, and then I will uh, come to our work. So this is something which is your first chapter in your solid state physics book, uh, maybe the second chapter, something like Kittel or Escort Marmin and starts with 1928 by Bloch's uh, famous discovery about the Bloch solution. So this is typically Bloch waves and this is the band in the empty lattice approximation. And the interesting thing is that I can short of from a group theoretic perspective can talk about the block problem in terms of the lattice transitional operator. And this lattice transitional operator forms this uh, abelian group and it has this very interesting close properties. Almost at, this, uh, at the same time, uh, Landau came with this very important discovery, which he originally proposed to explain the diamagnetism in material and uh, that he solved this problem of electron in the presence of a magnetic field. And uh, as we all know, that this gives this uh, beautiful Landau levels. And this is a pictorial demonstration of the Landau levels. So these are just like the energy levels of the harmonic oscillator with very high uh, degeneracy. And gradually, as time progressed, people started realizing that this is this, this profound discovery that actually not only led to the diamagnetism in material, but also many other interesting phenomena. And the most important of them, which came almost like 50 years after the discovery of the quantum Hall effect. So this is just a cultural site for this that quantum Hall effect won two Nobel Prize after its uh, discovery. And, uh, and this is what it is, that if you go to the extreme low temperature and a very high magnetic field, then the Hall conductivity develops plateaus, both the integer and the fractional, whereas ideally it should be something like a proportional to the one by a straight line uh, if you just uh, follow the simple quantum mechanics. And that is essentially the birth of the new topological physics, which nowadays is uh, uh, coming in the various uh, variety and leading to a lot of new and interesting discoveries. Almost a little bit before the discovery of the quantum Hall effect, there is also a very interesting uh, discovery and which has a direct connection with this uh, talk. And that was by this uh, famous uh, calculation uh, of, uh, though he was, of course, not the first person to uh, think about this problem. This problem, as we all know, exists from the time of Peirels, and he uh, first uh, assigned this problem to the Harper, who gave the corresponding equation. So the whole idea is that to combine the results of the Landau and the block and try to see what will be the energy levels and the wave functions of the block electrons in presence of an uniform magnetic field. So if you just write down this equation in the tight bending model, then this gives this very interesting eigenvalue equation 
which goes by the name of the Harper equation. And it was first pointed out by Mark Asbell, as Hofstadter recounted in his very famous paper, that it was uh, the recursive structure as here presented confirms in the main, but differs in details with the important but extremely difficult article by Asbell, which states that spectrum is entirely determined by continued fraction of alpha, and it shows some very interesting cell similar structure. So if you look for this particular talk, what is very important, if you look at this Hofstadter butterfly, so this is the band structure of a electron in a magnetic field in presence of a square lattice potential. So these are the Landau levels, as you can see these lines. So these are the, uh, so where the value of the flux is uh, very low. In that particular limit, you can actually recover these Landau levels. And as you go to the increasing strength of the magnetic field, then these Landau levels, you know, start splitting into the bands, and those bands form what is this beautiful self-similar structure, which goes by nowadays by this name of the Hofstadter butterfly. And then comes this famous discovery, uh, interpretation of the Hall effect in terms of the topological invariant by uh, Thaules, Kohomoto, uh, Nightingale, and then Nage uh, in this very classic paper in uh, 1982. And uh, they actually pointed out this uh, very important aspect because Hall conductivity being a transport quantity, it is very abnormal that it was so uh, nicely quantized that the quantization is almost in one in the part of the more than a million. And uh, that was one of the most exact quantization in the whole entire history of the physics. And uh, what they pointed out, that if you try to calculate this Hall conductivity uh, using the standard formula, which is the Kubo formula, then you can actually figure out that you have this relu agent, which has the topology of a torus. And the Hall conductivity written in terms of this uh, block wave function, that is that defines nothing but the char number on this particular topological space. And because it's a topological invariant, therefore, this particular number is insensitive to the various details of the Hamiltonian. And that actually leads to the quantization of the Hall conductivity. And that is why the quantization is so perfect. So that was sort of birth of the, uh, this uh, new uh, you know, this domain of the topological physics, which uh, comes uh, uh, from the, uh, the quantum Hall effect. And, uh, and then comes this uh, very famous uh, discovery uh, by uh, Alden. And he wrote a very significant paper, which was not, uh, in fact, even cited very few times at the initial years, because possibly people have not uh, realized its significance. But what he pointed out, he wanted to get as this uh, name of this uh, the, this thing suggests that the model for a quantum Hall effect without Landau levels condensed matter realization of the parity element. So what he essentially did, he considered a lattice model. In the lattice model, this model is essentially a staggered flux uh, lattice model, where you have the magnetic field in an up and down configuration. And uh, so the net flux per unit cell vanishes. So even though you have a magnetic field, but you are not under some circumstances, you are not explicitly breaking the time uh, reversal symmetry. And in this particular model, what he also figured out that the corresponding Hall conductivity is going to be quantized. So that sort of actually means, you know, later on provokes the people like look to look for more, you know, means interesting situation where without using directly a magnetic field, you can get the topological quantization of this conductivity. And finally, we have this birth of uh, new class of the topological insulators and these materials. So this is more or less where the history part of my talk is over now. More, you know, the more the relevant part for, from our worst perspective is going to start after this. So, okay. So I, so this, in fact, if I look, if I just, you know, tell you, I will not be cheating that telling that, you know, this is the only result in our paper. So, and this is nothing, but this is just a Fourier series. So you consider a simple general periodic magnetic field profile, any general periodic magnetic field profile. And uh, you can just, you know, expand, if it's a periodic profile, you can just expand in terms of a Fourier series. So this is your first term, which actually gives you an uniform magnetic field. And then you sum up over all the other terms over this reciprocal lattice vector. And what is very important to uh, uh, actually note here, that this uniform part is nothing but the spatial average of this field. So the residual part, which is the periodic part, that has same periodicity as the original modulation. So therefore, I can always write an, any such periodic field as a combination of an uniform part and a periodic. So if that is the case, then you can do this very following uh, interesting decomposition. You just find out what is the flux. Then your total flux, which will be given by this periodic field, is only going to come from the first term. 
and the net flux which is coming from all the rest of the terms that is going to be 0, which means that your flux due to BP is 0 in each unit cell. So essentially your any periodic structure that is this very interesting result, it is a very general result and uh, it was uh, not uh, uh, a very new result also because uh, it was already pointed out in some way and this was used also in a, uh, in a way in the Haldane's uh, work and this uh, first it was pointed out this uh, solid state physics series uh, by uh, Turnbull, Enrich and uh, so on and Sage, Turnbull and so if you open up this book, you will figure out. So, but the point is that if you would like to do any calculation in such periodic form, then you need to calculate the explicit form of the corresponding vector potential in some suitable gauge for this periodic part of this field. So this is the time when we are, you know, sort of struggling to figure out how to generalize their calculation of a periodic modulation of magnetic field in the two dimension. And then we realize this very interesting identity. And we figured out that if we can actually utilize this identity in a, uh, in a sensible way, then possibly our calculation is going to be much simpler. Of course, you know, since it's a 2D periodic modulation from the very beginning, we know we are going to get something like an Hofstadter model. But what will be exactly the details of the model? That was what we are interested in. And in that particular regard, we just uh, figured out that, you know, this very interesting identity is going to take us out of this uh, uh, problem and give us some sensible result of this. And why we are interested in this thing? Because this is what is the original motivation, which we have uh, sort of do this literature survey for quite a few years. And that is why we, I get into this. Uh, magnetic field. So that's in the same way you can short up, you know, uh, integrate something like an boron nitride uh, type of things with the graphene. Possibly something similar is uh, uh, one can also do, one can actually already have done it for the 2D electron gas. For the graphene, it's being a very thin structure. It is technologically a little bit uh, complicated as my experimental colleague uh, pointed out to me, but it is still very much possible. And one of the first person who did experiment on such system was none other than Von Pritzing himself. He did this work in 1995 and but somehow for whatever reason this work stopped you know after he obtained some interesting features in this uh, diagonal conductivity. So he essentially put this L gas uh, structures uh, in the presence of such magnetic modulation and measured the corresponding uh, uh, diagonal resistivity in this particular paper. I am not aware that you know there has been very systematic uh, study of this particular problem later on. Uh, for the other interesting aspects of that and our concern is more with this uh, other aspects of this. Okay, so now your, our job is very simple. So you do some very straightforward algebra. So this is essentially the corresponding magnetic modulation which we consider and I will just uh, show you that what it actually tells. So it is something, it's, uh, something very simple. So this is actually what is your typical magnetic field profile. So you have a square lattice type of structure. And each coil lattice contains a circle where the field uh, strength, magnetic field strength is B1 and then other part is B2. There is of course a theta function available here. So you should not worry about this theta function. We know and there are standard technique how to handle this uh, theta function by just using this uh, Stokes theorem. So that actually can be uh, taken care of. Now given this thing, we are just going to write the corresponding uh, graphene Hamiltonian. Of course, we have taken all necessary I means approximations uh, that we are in the k dot p representation. So it is very close to the Dirac point and uh, so on and so forth. And we can just write this uh, corresponding equation for the monolayer graphene in presence of this. And uh, this is uh, going to be our magnetic field profile. So the other interesting part which you have been able to obtain that we get a very nice uh, representation and that was uh, something which took us also some time to find out a suitable representation of a periodic vector potential. You can actually convince yourself that if your average flux over power unit cell is going to be zero, then it is always possible to, so there is a theorem which tells you always possible to find out a periodic uh, in some suitable gauge 
some periodic form of the vector potential. Uh, though of course in the actual case you have to find it out and in this case it turns out using some trick what we figured out that we can actually generalize the symmetric gauge vector potential now for a completely lattice structure. So that was the another interesting result in this particular problem. So we have both the uniform part of the magnetic field given in the symmetric gauge potential and it's a 2D model. So symmetric gauge is a natural choice not the Landau gauge which is effectively a 1D thing though at some stage one can use the a gauge invariance and use this uh, Landau gauge also in a clever way. But initially for the structure of this problem you require the symmetric gauge potential and this is going to be the uh, periodic part of this vector potential. Okay. So uh, these are the details of this thing which you can find out in the paper. Uh, we have a huge appendix with all the details calculation and everything is given here uh, and how we have actually devised this thing. Uh, and then we just go and find out uh, so try to solve the Schrodinger equation. Now while solving the Schrodinger equation, one of the interesting thing which comes to the help again, this uh, famous magnetic transitional operator. So in presence of a magnetic field, the usual lattice transitional operator, they now get converted into the magnetic transitional operator. Now this if you look at, this is the magnetic transitional operator corresponding to, to the uniform magnetic field. But very interestingly, since in this case, the periodic part corresponds to the net flux 0 through unit, uh, each unit cell, one can actually show that this full, uh, this, uh, uh, and it has this uh, following property, this periodic property, one can actually show this entire Hamiltonian is also going to commute with this magnetic transitional operator, which is for an uniform magnetic field. So what it turns out, so what it turns out that in such system, the magnetic transitional symmetry is exactly same as the TKNN or the Hofstadter problem. So that sort of clinches almost all the answers uh, in this particular problem. And then we did the, all the details of this calculation. So you can write your, uh, you can sort of diagonalize the graphene Hamiltonian, then you can write its corresponding terms which are coming from the magnetic field. So the reason why I called it magnetic Hofstadter butterfly is that we do not have an actually a typical lattice potential, but here the lattice geometry is generated entirely by the magnetic field and that is why I have used this particular adjective here, the magnetic. And then you have this uh, various parts of this corresponding potential, which has a periodic and then a periodic part. But the main interesting thing is that the magnetic transitional operator sort of uh, commutes with the Hamiltonian. Now I'm sure that you know here most of the audience they are aware of this uh, magnetic transition operator and these uh, details that the interesting part in the case of a uh, this in the presence of a magnetic field is that that if you write an usual tight binding model without a magnetic field this is your typical tight binding Hamiltonian. The moment you go to the magnetic field then all your hopping parameter which is nothing but a transition matrix element that actually acquires a phase and this phase is like this and uh, so it is just the proportional to the a dot dr and that if you go through the each unit cell then it just gives you a, the flux contains within this each unit cell. So as a result both your unit cell as and the below zone that uh, sort of uh, need to be modified and that structure comes uh, uh, beautifully in the uh, magnetic transitional operator. So anyway, so once you understand this particular part then it is very easy to write down that uh, what is going to be your expansion of the block wave functions in such basis because the magnetic transitional operator corresponds to just to the uniform part of the field and not the periodic part. So it is the same expansion which one uses in a typical Hofstadter model and then you set this condition which is the condition for a uh, weak magnetic field. So it actually tells you this lattice spacing is much smaller than the magnetic length corresponding to this uniform part of this magnetic field. So this actually gives you a weak and slowly varying magnetic field. And then you just write down your corresponding discrete equation which takes the typical harper hofstadter form. And here I just wanted to point out these beautiful uh, properties of this uh, magnetic transitional operator which is there inbuilt into the, and this was first pointed out by, uh, here is Professor uh, Asa Weirbach was my postdoc advisor in Technion and this is his colleague Professor Joshua Jack who actually invented these things long back, all be, much before all this Hofstadter problem or this quantum Hall effect, all these things came. And this uh, very, as I just shown you, that the typical transitional operator that forms an abelian group, but in the case of the magnetic transitional operator, it forms this uh, very unusual uh, representations of this. Uh, 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 the, the, which you can uh, write down in terms of this combined magnetic transition operator. And as a result, both your magnetic unit cell, 
magnetic unicell get expanded and the magnetic below ion get contracted as compared to the original uh, uh, means uh, the, this unit cell and this magnetic below ion. And this is exactly the reason why you get the topological quantization in the case of the Hall conductivity. So if we just you know combine all these results, one can actually see that only one of, so if we fix the ratio of the flux to the each unit cell by P uh, in a, to a rational number where phi zero is the uh, flux quanta, then one can actually see that the one part of the field can be determined in terms of the other part of the field, uh, so which is a very simple result. So this just tells that this is the total flux, this is the flux due to the inner circle and this is therefore and what the uh, flux due to the outer circle is just going to be this and therefore the corresponding field B2 is just uh, going to have this uh, value. So you have this and then you plot this is what you get the uh, upstairs butterfly spectrum for uh, graphene in a 2D periodic modulation. So this is going to be its corresponding eigenspectrum. You get this uh, particle and um, uh, the, this uh, whole part because uh, your eigenvalue comes in terms of these square. So when you take the square root of that, that just gives you th this thing and you can play with this uh, gap and all other things uh, in this uh, model. So along this x-axis what you plot is the flux and along the y-axis what is plot uh, this, um, uh, uh, this uh, energy eigenvalues. Okay, so now coming uh, to the to, uh, topological quantization part, the moment you get an Hofstadter spectrum, automatically the next thing which you look for that whether in this case what will happen in the presence of a periodic magnetic field, will there also be a topological quantization? And the answer to this question is of course yes. So you just you know write down your um, uh, corresponding uh, block functions and uh, uh, use and this is. Uh, uh, going to give you in terms of the magnetic translational operator, this is what is just going to give you the periodic boundary condition. So, and uh, once you uh, do this, uh, so okay, so this is just another way of uh, plotting the Hofstadter uh, uh, spectrum. If you fix one of the field, you get the previous one, the typical uh, butterfly. If you fix other field, then you get this one. And uh, then we just use this standard TKNN approach. So this is going to be our uh, eigenfunctions in the block form, they are written in this form. And uh, since your uniform part of the magnetic field is non-zero, hence the magnetic transitional algebra implies that u k x y, which is the block part of this wave function, that must have zeros inside the magnetic unit cell and have the structure of the following. So this is what makes you the topology of this torus as a multiply connected geometry and that is why when you, you know, means uh, write, can write this particular integral in terms of the winding number. So once one does that, one just solve these u functions in terms of this uh, corresponding block equation and uh, then the whole conductivity can be obtained by directly applying the TKNN formula. So we just evaluate this whole conductivity and uh, using the standard technique and what we find out that in this case also the whole conductivity turns out to be quantized in terms of the sigma h. So therefore what it tells, so this is a very interesting thing which tells in general as long as you satisfy this condition of that, that your gap is not going to close, then a periodic magnetic field that is also going to give you a quantized whole conductivity. So we uh, sort of uh, uh, later on figured out that well some people worried about this particular problem but they mostly use the perturbative technique uh, when they consider a periodic magnetic field and as a result you know not much exact result was obtained in this case but using this uh, just simply this Fourier decomposition what we figured out that in this case uh, the Hall conductivity can be shown in the same way using the TKNN formula. So it okay so the implication of this is the following that uh, if you now consider a sandwich of such periodic magnetic structure with a 2D electron system, then you can possibly get a much more wider range of the topological materials for such uh, uh, magnetically modulated uh, uh, structure. And uh, we are now extending this calculation for the case of the bilayer graphene where also it uh, shows uh, some signature of the, the Hofstadter butterfly already, so this is here and it is also going to show which is soon going to submit it is uh, we are jointly working with one of my former students who is my postdoc in uh, uh, Lund University Sweden uh, Rashi Sajdeb. So uh, we are calculating this uh, quantization of Hall conductivity and another thing which you are also uh, calculating because there is going to be Hofstadter butterfly what will be a very interesting structure is the diagonal part of the conductivity which is going to show some novel type of Subnikov 
uh, Dehas oscillation. So that is something which is a somewhat computationally heavier part of this problem, which you have not done in the previous work. So that is something which you are doing currently. And uh, so this is, uh, so let me uh, conclude here. Uh, so th this is the conclusion. So the conclusion is that IQH, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Periodic. <laughs> so, uh, okay, uh, I can just you know use the smaller version of this and. Uh, uh, one second, please. Yeah, I can do it from the computer, but. Uh, Last one. Last one. Okay. So the uh, yeah. Thank you. So this is the conclusion. IQH in periodic modulation is equal to IQH in uniform magnetic field plus anomalous quantum Hall effect. This Haldane's quantum Hall effect in a zero flux lattice. So that is essentially, and this is nothing but a Fourier transformation. So that's what it is, and uh, thank you for your attention. You have only an uniform part, otherwise everything is same as the Halden model. But in Halden model, he considered a uh, direct uh, hexagonal lattice structure uh, okay. and not explicit form of the magnetic field was there. Yeah, but still it takes that. Uh, it it's a, exactly same. So that's what we figured out that one part of it is exactly corresponds to the Halden model. It's a staggered flux type of things. We only have the explicit form of the magnetic field and the vector potential. But there is the other part which gives you the uniform magnetic field, which accounts for the standard quantum Hall effect. So in the Halden model, if you look at the charm, uh, the charm number is zero. In this particular case, the charm number is finite and it can take all these integer values because of this uniform part of the magnetic field. They, yes, that's correct, yes, yeah. But in the periodic scalar potential, you don't get that Halden part. That gives you the usual quantum Hall effect, the char number. In this case, you also get that Halden part. So one of the things which we are trying to look for, and that is why we are looking for this diagonal resistivity calculation, that diagonal resistivity is going to possibly co contain some indication of in the subnikov dias oscillation because of the existence of the <coughs> Halden part. But that is some part which is still going on. We have to, I don't have a specific answer to this question. In twisted bilayer graphene, yeah, interlayer coupling acts like a vector potential, right? So that is also periodically modulated. That is also periodically Some modulated. Yeah. So that there it will be more interesting because there you have a from the lattice structure itself another type of effect to gauge field is currents between the layers. That's correct. Yeah. There are no other questions. Okay.